You know what time it is? It's time to get some Amy bread, okay? We're gonna do some epic aiming. Aiming is the coolest thing you could possibly do with your life. Hello everybody, I'm Farrar, and today we're gonna be continuing where you left off on the 2016 Amy 1. Now I personally did really bad, or at least relatively bad on the AMC 12, so my chances at aim are basically zero, but I still think that math is like just good for your brain. Like, I feel like you should still do competition math even if you're not gonna get to the next level because competition math just makes everything so much easier like I don't know competition math just like makes your brain explode it's crazy and exploded brains are good okay if you didn't know the more explodinated your brain is the better so that's why we're gonna do some aiming but before we get into that I got a rant about Yusubo one of you guys asked me to react to the Yusubo contest this time and here's my reaction bruh it's an absolute bruh moment <laughs> like, actually though, that test was insanely hard compared to the previous years. Like, first thing first, right? I barely had time to finish. And the previous test I finished with like 20 minutes left. Second off, like, I read Campbell a lot of times, okay? I read the whole thing cover to cover three times, like the actual book. And then I reviewed my notes on the book cover to cover four times. So I know what's in the book. And basically none of that stuff that was on the test was actually in the book. Oh, it really triggered me because like, I, a bunch of people have studied for this and they look on the website and it says, read Campo if you want to do well on this exam. And none of the stuff was in Campo. Like all of the stuff was literally research level stuff or more than that. Like I just don't get how people are supposed to know all this stuff, especially if the resources tell you that you're supposed to research Campo. And in the past, all the past content, Campo is plenty to do well on it. So I feel like the cutoff is going to be fairly low, like under 20, but whatever, that's my reaction. I don't know, this is the same reaction I had after semi last year. Like the open exam was great last year, like it had concrete basis in campo and I did fairly good on that one, okay? And then I get to semis and like none of it's in campo and I, I just, I'm just like, wait. Is it even worth studying for this? If, if I study the whole thing, it's just not gonna help. So I don't know. Yeah, that's my feeling about this test. It just felt completely not what we learned in camp. I don't, I don't know. There's my reaction for you, my dude. But anyways, now that we're getting back to Amy, Amy's beautiful, Amy's my love, my life. I'm happy now that we're talking about Amy. Let's just ignore the, that use about ever happened, okay? Let's get into the actual fun math problem. Okay, so for integers A and B, consider the complex number, blah, blah, blah. Find the number of ordered pairs A and B that says this number is a real number. Okay, so basically you're just setting the right side to zero, right? And you want it to ha be in the right domain. So like you want AB plus 2016 to be positive or non-negative. And you want AB to not equal negative 100. So essentially we want root A plus B is equal to zero. We want root, I mean, no, we want AB plus 2016 to be greater than equal to zero, and then we also want AB to not equal to negative 100. So these are all the conditions. But for the first thing to be true, we basically just need that A is equal to negative B. And then we could just substitute, so we'll get negative A squared plus 2016 is going to be greater than or equal to zero, and then negative A squared is not equal to negative 100, so A is not equal to 10. So this equation right here automatically, like, guarantees of certain a's because we know that like a squared is always positive right so i mean negative a squared is always going to be negative so basically we know that a squared is less than or equal to 2016 and that basically means that a is between negative 44 is less than or equal to a is less than or equal to positive 44 because 45 squared is 2025 and then we subtract a is equal to negative 10 or positive 10 because a can't be plus or minus 10 okay how many are there? So there's going to be 88 to 89 and then subtract 2 for the 10s and then we should be Gucci. So 87 is 87 correcto. Wait up. Let's think about this. So for every A, there's only one B because we need B to equal negative 8. Oh, wait. Oh, that's not how it works. If, if it was negative on the left side, then that would become imaginary. But we know that the right side is also for sure well the right side is for sure real because absolute value is in the root but wait an imaginary number no but that's for sure okay well so if the left term is going to be 
imaginary, that means a, b plus 2016 is negative, then the right term has to be equal to the left term so it cancels out. So for that to be true, let's see. So we have 8, 88, 8, 87 for our, current ter for our current solution so far, but we also had to consider the other case. So basically we want that root a, b plus 2016 minus root a plus b is going to be equal to zero. So why don't we just assume that a is greater than negative b? Wait, what? Yeah, let's just assume that the magnitude of a is greater than the magnitude of b and that a is positive. And then we could like find the ordered pairs after that, right? Well, yeah, in that case, we basically need to have a plus b is equal to ab plus 2016. And for this, you basically use sine of favorite factoring trick and you get a minus 1 times b minus 1 is equal to negative 2016. 16, negative 2015. Yeah, negative 2015. Or we could have, if a plus b is negative, in that case we basically have negative. No, no, wait, what? Wait. Hold up. So if a plus b is positive, well, this right part is going to be negative, so we want this to be negative here. So we basically have a plus 1 times b plus 1 is equal to. Now that is equal to negative 2015. Wait a minute. If a plus 1 times b plus 1 is equal to negative 2015, then how could a, b be less than negative 2016? Well, okay, so for example, negative 2016 and 0 work, but that doesn't satisfy that we want a, a, b plus 2016 to be negative, so that doesn't work. Well, well let's see. What's the factor at the end of 2015? Okay, so 5 and then. 4, 0, 3, and divide by 13, so 3, 1, 1, 31 times 13, so 5 times 13 times 31, so that would be 66 times 30, is that greater than 2016? Well, okay, to make this equation correct, it should be an i here, so this basically means that negative a, b minus 2016 is equal to mm, absolute value of a plus b, okay. So if we assume that a plus b is positive, then this just becomes a plus 1 times b plus 1 is minus 1 is equal to negative 2016, in which case you just transfer this over, and then we get it equal to negative 2015. But this doesn't work because, like, I'm pretty sure if you do it out, the magnitude of a, b is always going to be less than this because if we do it out, well, yeah, because like you're basically saying that a b is equal to a plus b minus 2016, right? And or plus 2016. No, no. Wait, what? The negative. Okay, yeah. Oh, that works. Wait, so that means it works for everything? So this basically says that a b plus a plus b plus 1 is equal to negative 2015. So that means AB is equal to negative 2016 minus A minus B. And we know that minus that A plus B is positive, so this does mean that AB is guaranteed to be less than negative 2016. But that also means that negative of it is going to be more than 2016, so this does, case doesn't work. This case doesn't work. So the other case is where an a plus b is negative, so that's going to give us that a minus 1 times b minus 1 is equal to negative 2050. Okay, in this case, we basically have that a b is equal to a plus b minus 2060. Wait, what? So a plus b is negative, that means that a b has more magnitude than 2016 in the negative direction, so that means this is going to be positive. But Oh, we want that to be positive. Wait, bro, bro, bro. Okay, okay, so that's... Oh, so this does work. So wait, let's go back. Okay, so let's go back to our a plus 1, b plus 1. So I think we're chilling. We basically said that a, b is equal to negative 2016 minus a minus b, and we basically want this plus 2016. Okay, so that works. Okay, so I was just trolling. Trolling is good, don't worry, we're fine. And then basically we want, and basically we know that as long as a plus b is positive in this case, this should work. 
So this basically means that the positive number has to have more magnitude than the negative number. In which case, that's just the number of pairs of multiples of 2015 that there are. So there's 5 times 13 times 31, so there's 8 multiples, so that means 4 of them are going to have the bigger one. Well, there's 4 pairs, and for every pair we give the bigger one a positive number and the smaller one a negative number. However, we could switch between A and B, so there's 8 total for this case. Okay. And now the other case is when A plus B is negative, in which case we have A minus 1 times B minus 1 is equal to negative 2015, and then the same concept applies. We just give the bigger one, yeah, we basically give the bigger one the negative. So it's going to be 4 times 2 again, so that's going to give it 8. So it's 8 plus 8 for those two. So we covered all these cases and then plus the 87 that we came up with in the beginning. And then that gives us 16 plus 8 is 103. Okay, and that should be the answer. Are any other cases we're forgetting? No, I think we are Gucci. Very nice, let's check. All right, very cool. We almost made a bad mistake, but it's okay. We did it. We're chill. All right, for a permutation P is equal to A1, A2, dot, 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 A9. For the digits 1, 2, dot, 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 9. Let SP denote the sum of the three digit numbers A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, A6, A7, A8, A9. Let M be the minimum value of SP subject to the condition that the unit digit of SP is, e is zero. Okay. Let N denote the number of permutation P, which with s of p is equal to m. Find m minus n. Okay. So basically for the unit digit to equal 0, to minimize the total sp, we want to use the biggest numbers for the unit digit. So let's see, 9, 8, 7. So this currently gives us a 4 as the unit digit, which is no good, not okay. So we got to think harder about this. So we're going to go how to go down by 4. So we could bring the, both of these guys down. Well, we could bring this guy down by one and this guy down by three. Well, for every time we move this down, we're gonna basically be adding a 10 and then we're gonna add one 100. So honestly, it doesn't really matter. So let's just see. So the biggest way you could do is gonna be nine and then bring down the eight twice and then seven down twice. So five and then six, okay. So if we basically have nine, six, five, then we basically get that our tens digits are going to be 8, 7, 4, and then our hundred digits are going to be 1, 2, 3. So then this is going to give us a 2 plus 4 plus 15. So it's going to give us a 1, 0, 1, and then carry over the 2, and then we get 8, 1, 0. So it seems like 8, 1, 0 is the smallest. And then we want to basically have that n of the number of permutations such that that's true. So basically as long as the units did it sum to 20, we're going to have this as a thing. Because basically your one digits are going to sum to 20, then if you take the largest amount of the remainders, you should get a sum of 15 plus 4, you should get 19. Wait, yeah, because if you decrease one of these by 1, and then you had to increase another by 1, in which case one of these will go down by one and one of these will go up by one. So it just cancels out. So as long as the unit digit sums to 20, then there is a corresponding way to make a 10. So let's try to find the ways to get a sum of 20, such that the biggest number is a nine. So let's see, so let's say the biggest number is a nine, then we could have nine, six, five, we could have nine, seven, four, nine, eight, three. And then if we have eight as the biggest, then we have eight, seven, five, and that's it. Or is that it? Yeah, that's it. And then seven can't be the biggest, right? Yeah, seven can't be the biggest. So we basically have, let's just validate that this is true. So then this would be nine plus six plus four, which does sum to 19, epic. So we have four ways of doing that. So we basically have four and then we multiply by three factorial, three factorial, and three factorial. Because we could independently order the unit digit, the tens digit, and the hundreds digit. Very cool. So that's going to be four times two sixteen. So two sixteen times four is going to be four, two, uh, six, eight. So eight sixty four versus eight ten. That gives us fifty four as the absolute value of the difference. So is that our answer?
Mm, what the shit? I don't see any reason why not. Yeah, I think we're good. 54. Whoop, bro, we're trolling. Oh, back up, back up. Okay, let's try again. What did we do wrong? So there are four ways to find the unit digit such that that works. So it's four and then three factorial to order the thing. So not only this thing is wrong, hold up. Wait, but like there's three factorial ways to order it, right? Because the unit digit have to go in three, six, and nine, and then the ten digit have to go in two, five, and eight. Okay, let's just make sure. So nine six five works. Okay. Does this work? Eight six five. Okay. That works. And then seven six five. Oh. This doesn't work. This is not valid. Oh, this makes so much more sense because we want the one hundred digits to be one two three, so we can't snatch the three in this. Okay. So this does become the three, then this becomes six forty eight, and then we do and then we do 810 minus 648, and that basically gives us, what, 162, okay. Now that should be the answer. There we go. Silly mistakes are beautiful. I love silly mistakes so much, oh my god. Don't you guys love silly mistakes? I do too. What can I say? Well, anyways, I'm gonna try to make some more, like, less long videos, because long videos are hard to watch, so... Let's just cut it there. I'll make more of these Amy walkthroughs. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, let me know. Leave a comment. Subscribe for more. All that good stuff. Thank you guys for watching again. And see you guys next time.